I think maybe just um, the most radical thing you can do is just say, no, I want to go slow. I sometimes have a strategy of making beautiful things that are actually quite ugly or that actually are quite dark. <laughs> it's funny because for me, it's it's not that important to be an artist mm. or to be... Uh, I mean, I, I take profession very seriously. Success for me is just being nominated to being seen, yeah. to that all the things you do, actually, there's someone that sees it. That feels very good. Yeah. really curious about your art <laughs> but also um, the the curating part it's something I'm not familiar with ah well curating is actually quite new for me or it's not new I've been doing it for a long time without knowing I was doing it but now I work at a quite big and established institution part of my interest in sustainability actually is like where my interest in curating comes in for example, I don't always love to make physical things myself, so then it actually makes sense for me to support the practices of other artists. Both as an artist myself and when I work with others as a curator, the role of curator is very important. I have absolutely experienced having bad curators <laughs> in my time as an artist uh, that you don't realize are bad until you have the good ones. Mm -hmm. For me, good curators can actually expand what you know about your own work. Sometimes it can really help to have context and that they maybe even have ideas about how it can manifest. Have you experienced this or worked with any good curators? In my particular case, I almost never know when to put an end to a project. So I then definitely need a curator to tell me, okay, it's time for you to show <laughs> what you've been working for the past five, seven years. <laughs> yeah. And then the next uh, step would be uh, taking decisions. Mm. Uh, that for me would be very hard to take. Let's say you have one photograph as part of the series that you know how hard you, you worked for. Mm. Let's say you... Uh, walked through mud in very rainy conditions for 20 kilometers and then you took that shot and it, it, it's actually not that important for the whole picture and obviously you're being subjective and <laughs> you want that uh, to be part of the project and then you need somebody very objective and uh, rational taking decisions like this. That's so funny that you say that curators are objective. I think maybe a lot of us try to be, but we're not. It's all, what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah, all, all humans have their preferences. They have the things that they like or um, the things that they identify with themselves. If a work really excites me, maybe it's because uh, it's also working with some of the similar themes that I'm interested in or maybe because... I want to see a person like that represented. Um, curators can also put you in conversation with other artists. Like I also have a lot of um, education art history, so then have different references to bring. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and uh, this sounds as well as something you you mentioned before. You know, creating links and uh, yeah, just bringing projects closer to happening and uh, yeah 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 we often uh, see the budgets so uh -huh. um, even though we want to have that photo that you have walked 20 kilometers <laughs> in the mud and taken uh, maybe it just doesn't work maybe um, if we put it on the wall and it's too close to someone else's work it's bad for them like there's so many things to take into consideration yeah, that are that's being objective and yeah, rational <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> another thing I've been struggling with the, um, what, what would you call it, uh, the syndrome of imposture. Ah. So I might need a curator just to let me know, hey, your work actually deserves to be shown. Yes, and, that's... And uh, convince me, <laughs> make me feel comfortable about what I've been doing. 
That's really important that you said that because I think a lot of artists were working alone or just all in our bubbles. Like, of course, you can be, I don't know, like get really excited about what you're working on, almost delusional. And this is the best thing anyone's ever made. But then it goes down that, oh, this is horrible. It's been done before. It's very good to have a, yeah, someone else see it and see the worth and the value. Okay, I'm glad yeah. we... <laughs> yeah, I also, <laughs> I, I recognize this. I also, um, the best curators I work with, um, so when I work as an artist, I like to show my artworks, also with a nod to sustainability, many times. So instead of making new works each time I'm invited, I will maybe make one work that changes a little bit, depending on where it is shown. And then it really helps to have a curator that um, will... I don't know, They. it's like every time the text is written for the work, it gets more and more interesting. There are more and more it, things it that... adds. Yeah, yeah. I really like working that way. And I think a lot of artists are starting to work this way. How do you well, work? I feel like this, my 30s and my uh, 40s, soon enough, uh, this is a time for working. And... At one point, uh, yeah, when I won't be able to, to work as much, then I should exhibit. Uh, but it's wrong because things are happening now and we need to act, we need to, to uh, talk about everything that happens. And I do refer uh, at, at climate change. Yes. It's, it's uh, the main thing that bothers me that... Uh, Uh, interests me, that worries me. Yes, I, I'd love to talk about climate change. Um, I'm originally from the US and I came to Norway in 2011. So I've been there now for 13 years. And when I came to take my master's there, um, I would say the awareness about climate change was not as big as you would think it would be. For me, what happened is I had already come from New York, from working in institutions and also exhibiting my work. But something happened where I couldn't think about anything else. It just took over. I stopped buying things. Like, it started my real life, right? I was like, oh, I can no longer uh, buy things made in plastic. Maybe I need to learn how to make deodorant. I never got good at it, so <laughs> it didn't last. But uh, just trying all these different things. And for me, it actually meant that I stopped making physical work. I just didn't want to print it out. I didn't want to make physical things. And... Um, It, it really changed the way, it, it changed everything for me. It really made me slow down. So actually, a work that I'm still showing a lot today in Norway um, was originally from 2016. Um, it's a work that uh, deals with, um, so the first work I made after having my big climate uh, breakdown was finding all of these strange rocks on the islands of the inner Oslo fjord. So Oslo is a very rich city, and over the last 10, 15 years, there's been an enormous amount of building. Oh, yeah. So all the waterfront, there are now these huge, big buildings of glass, like condos, a library, an opera, uh, art museum, just extremely much building. And from this, there's lots of little bits of building materials that disappear from the building sites and end up in the fjord. And so I kept finding on these islands, which you can take on the public transit, these little tiny rocks that were not rocks. Mm -hmm. They were styrofoam, that, but they looked not only like rocks, but very beautiful. So all these beautiful gem, like almost like gemstones and special uh, shells, but they were all styrofoam that had been changed. Some of them were quite fresh, so you could recognize, and some had been there for like 20 years, so they looked... They were not being picked up as trash because people thought it was nature. So eight years later, I took um, this project. I made a photography book and prints, and I have the physical collection. I actually visited every single school in a, a town called Fredrikstad and showed it to every 10-year-old and every 8-year-old. It was amazing. So getting to like meet every class and talking to them about, um, yeah, what does it mean when nature takes back like are things that humans make and yeah, talking to them about climate change. It was fantastic. One thing that really bothers me, and uh, I don't talk about this enough, and I'm 
getting really personal. I really want to have a child. And then again, the very first thought is, am I supposed to bring yeah. a child in this world that is about to burn down? So, yeah, I want a child. I want to get this place better. Um, I have two small children. Um, one of them was unplanned. We did not ha plan to have more than one. But uh, uh, for many years before we had children, I wasn't sure for the same reasons. Is it ethical to bring a child into this world? Um, and actually, I mean, it gets pretty depressing. <laughs> but if you look at how many resources it takes to raise a child, it is a lot. Mm -hmm. It is maybe like the biggest choice you can have for your climate impact like more than taking planes, more than buying clothes. Um, but also children, I mean, maybe I'm just an optimist. I feel like they can make things better. Yeah. Uh, you can also, like when I work with the kids, that they have an awareness of these things that I never had when I was growing up. When I was traveling around to these schools, um, of course you have kids who do not care, but you also have ones, especially like these I worked with 10-year-olds and 13-year-olds. There were some 13-year-olds who would ask me, oh, maybe is being vegan the best thing you can do? They were asking me about um, hormones in your body being changed by plastic. They just have a totally different relationship. Yeah. And if you're able to show them things at such a young age, hopefully they can make a change. Mm -hmm. Like hopefully that technology can catch up and we can actually solve these problems if we have enough people who care. Going back to, to a thing you said before, um, at one point you started thinking, should I print? Mm, uh, yeah. A, a thing I, I started doing is um, taking any photograph that I have already printed before, um, talking in any way about climate change. So, yeah. for example, I have a series of melted ice cream yeah. on on the sidewalk, on the concrete, or uh, many, many pictures from, from above the Arctic Circle, or anything uh, referring to, to melting. Yeah. To. So, uh, I have the original print, and then I freeze it. Oh. So, there is an... Uh, ice cube and then I let it melt and people see it while melting and then it gets the, the, the quality of the print the actual print gets worse and then I do it again and again and again that's so beautiful that's such a wonderful work and metaphor uh, it was a project that I started uh, while documenting an ultra marathon and then I decided to actually participate in that from marathon and I documented both phases and then I had an opening uh, with photographs from around there and the, the main piece was this it sounds device. really cool I also I, I feel like that's a really it's such it's so good because people see it and they you know they get it right away they see what is happening and it, it becomes so visceral, like you could almost touch it. Yeah. Uh, and that's also what really works with the kids, that they can touch these things. Yes. And they, um, <laughs> um, for this, yeah, these things with the kids, you would just have all of this plastic on a table and they wouldn't know it's plastic. So you tell them, oh, there's maybe one or two real rocks. Can you find them? Mm -hmm. And they pick it up and they get so stressed out. They're like, this is not real. What is this? Is this cake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe just... Um, the most radical thing you can do is just say, no, I want to go slow. I think a lot of Nor artists in Norway um, get very stressed. They feel like they're not doing enough. Maybe everyone feels like they're not mm. doing enough, not producing enough things. But I think it's, I don't know, we can't compare ourselves to other people. And a lot of what looks like maybe a singular person being so productive they probably have a lot of artist assistants. There's a lot of things we cannot see. I just, um, but personally, have learned not to get stressed by this. Yeah, I'm. I'm not stressed about being uh, original again and again and yeah. again and again. It's 
uh let's say being authentic is more important uh, there is there is a subtle difference between original and authentic as in i find being authentic on a higher level i hope it makes sense it does make sense um i'm trying to think of how to answer this so i'm an artist i'm a curator and i also am a publisher so in my publishing practice um I've been publishing and self-publishing for a very long time, too long, over 20 years. But uh, lately, I have been really using my imprint to um, maybe spread out the power. So I always work with underrepresented voices or people that have very, like, maybe very vulnerable, very raw stories that don't have a place anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, an example would be I worked with an artist from Brazil called Marina Dubia, who is based in Copenhagen. And her book that we published together, um, a really beautiful book, because in Brazil they have a really special history of like artist books and making things very tactile. Um, but she is half black and grew up in Brazil in a very poor neighborhood. And um, when she graduated from the art academy, she had a lot of um, anxiety and stress about what does it mean to be an artist? Can you make an impact? Is this something important to do? And um, she wrote an email to one of her peers. And it was a super long email. And at the very end of the email, there was a little bit about her anxiety about race because her peer she was also talking to was half black. But this part of the email, she deleted it. It was too personal. It was too mm -hmm. vulnerable. But as, I don't know, I've never done this, but I think people do this. She couldn't actually delete it forever. She just put it in a text document on her desktop. Mm -hmm. And it sat there for eight years. And then I made her publish them <laughs> eight years later. And then she went and she um, contacted this uh, colleague again and then talked to members of her family. And um, yeah, made actually a very beautiful book. Um, with a Brazilian title that translates to like, what have I got to do with that? Mm -hmm. So her like, um, it is about climate, it is about race, it is about like social responsibility and yeah, just being an artist. Yeah. I'm interested in all of those things. But yeah, that for me, this story is exactly about being authentic rather yeah. than original. That's personal. That's it is personal, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But also so so vital and um, part of my job as a curator and as a publisher is I want to give space to that. So that's so wonderful like that I'm in a position to allow these things to have a physical form and be in the world. I I mean, maybe it's just my personality or the way that I work, but I, um, I get a lot out of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So when I work as a publisher, I work with many people who have very personal, very authentic, important stories. And I... Um, I get a lot out of that, being able to help them with my, you know, my expertise, like the printing and the publishing and distribution. So um, collaboration is very important for me. And that's very inspirational for me because the best collaborations are when you really are yourself. How do you manage to hope to get your work seen or uh, the work of, of artists you work with? when every single day uh, billions of photographs are being uploaded on Instagram and the internet and... Actually working with books is part of my... It's not a solution, but maybe strategy. Because when like, you pick up your phone and there's thousands and thousands of images and videos and just so much content, uh, it can be a very different experience um, I don't know, seeing work in a gallery it can be a very different experience picking up a book or even just a website that someone's personal, just a one-on-one -on -one experience mm -hmm. and maybe trying to focus on making the best possible one-on-one -on -one experiences instead of trying to make the best social media stories or the best content. Yeah. What I love about uh, books or even uh uh, an exhibition an mm -hmm. exhibition lasts for let's say one month eight yeah. months um and the book lasts for 70 years or more i think even though i'm scared of making physical things physical things can let Last. images live longer yeah, yeah. and have yeah. a place in people's every day okay so one of my huge frustrations is that 
actually for for me unfortunately art making art comes on the second place because yes. first of all i have to make a living and for the past couple of years i've been doing commercial gigs i i, I don't want to lie about it it gives me the um, the financial comfort to take one month vacations and explore uh, go very far one thing that i'm working on is discovering the um, everything that's above the arctic circle both during summer and during winter so 24 hours of light yeah. every day and then the opposite dark for 24 hours and yeah that that's uh, an expensive project <laughs> what is the art funding look like in romania <sighs> is there anything uh, there are grants uh, there limited uh, both in uh, uh, artists that can get them yeah. and also the the values are not are not enough most of the times you also have to support yourself yeah. or find private um, um, sponsors I'm really grateful that there is plenty of commercial work even though I get nothing uh, uh, in- inside my yeah. soul. But that's also could be nice because at the end of the day, you're just able to leave it behind you, right? Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. It's, um, there's such different realities. When I lived in New York, I also worked at an arts institution. I worked 100%. So that's five days a week. And then I also had my artistic practice. In Norway, it's a bit better. I only work two or three days a week. And then the rest is for my practice. Norway has a lot of funding, maybe too much. Uh, we're, we're quite spoiled, actually, the artists. <laughs> However, I will say that when you work with things that are authentic or maybe uncomfortable, because even though you and I are comfortable talking about climate change and the importance of doing this, um, I don't know, the funding bodies, they like to talk about sustainability but they do not necessarily fund experimental practices. So a lot of artists in Norway have working grants. I did not get one this year. So I work as a curator, 50%, so two or three days a week. I also do teaching. So I teach at, um, usually teach, um, like, do you know about rhizography? Really short, rhizography is a special printing technique that kind of came out of these funny machines from Japan in the 80s. They're kind of a mixture. They look like copy machines, but they're closer to lithography and silkscreen. And they don't use a lot of power. So it's kind of like this eco-friendly, half printmaking, half automated process. And so it's very popular in Norway, actually, in the schools. So I often teach, like, publishing and printing. It's funny because for me, it's it's not that important to be an artist Mm. or to be... uh, I mean, I I take profession very seriously. And that's, yeah, that's something that probably happened to me when I was 18, 19. So I started taking photographs when I was 16. Yeah. And if people would ask me, so what what do you like to do? And I'd say photography. Oh, you're an artist. I'd say, yeah, yeah. Artist, uh, artist, uh, artistic photography. Yeah, that's, that's what I probably am. And then when I actually started working for magazines, for, um, you know, for, for uh, uh, agencies, creative agencies, uh, and somebody would ask me, so what do you do for a living? I'd say photography, and they'd go like, oh, so you're an artist. No, 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 I'm a photographer. I'm a professional. Probably did that for seven, eight years, and then started getting frustrated Hey, but there's so many things I want to say. I want to have an impact. I want to be an artist. That's so interesting. Every time I'm I'm struggling with something, I I suffer because of a thing that happens in our society. And I'm talking to my mom, let's say. Uh, she, She has nothing to do with arts. She'd go like, but... You're, you're an artist. You should only care about beautiful things. And my reaction is, no, 
No, the only thing that matters is having an impact. It it's meaningless yeah. if it doesn't have an impact. Agreed, hundred percent. It doesn't have to be about beautiful stuff for one second. You can kind of trick people though, or like I sometimes have a strategy of making beautiful things that are actually quite ugly, or that <laughs> actually are quite dark, or that make you think. And works that have several layers tend to. I don't know, maybe get a bigger audience. What what is success for you? What what does that mean? Oh. So I'm at a very interesting point in my career. So um right, I had my big breakdown. I couldn't make works ten years ago. But over the last three years, my career as an artist and as a curator have have really gotten big. So um I get so embarrassed. This is what's funny. Um, so I'm nominated for one of the biggest art awards in Norway right now, which is is very cool. It's uh, very unexpected. Um, in Norway, there's three big art awards, uh, one for kind of like newly graduated artists, one for maybe like younger experimental, and then one for very established. And I've been nominated for the young experimental artists. So next March, we put on an exhibition together, five of us. And then, of course, one walks away with 25,000 euros, mm -hmm. which you can use to yeah help your artistic practice or make something. Success for me is just being nominated to being seen, yeah. to that all the things you do, actually, there's someone that sees it. That feels very good. Mm -hmm. It helps with any kind of imposter syndrome you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That kind of recognition. Yeah. Uh, for me, I guess, uh, I mean, I, I never think about it because I'm grateful for being able to, to do what I care for. Yeah. Even the, you know, the, the things I, I said before, working on commercial sets uh, many days a week, uh, it's still something that, I mean... <laughs> having the the camera uh, with me every day and using it that's how i define myself so and uh, what i want to be who i want to be so i i feel like i'm uh, i've reached <laughs> success maybe not who you want to be but who you are yeah, yeah. That, thank you that's <laughs> what i meant that's one level of success and then the the next one the the one that i'm um reaching for is having an impact yes and um yeah I, i'm really looking forward to seeing your projects they sound really exciting thank you yeah